As many as 3,000 real languages are purely spoken. Others adapted an existing script rather than create a new one. For example, Socotri had no written form until a new alphabet based on the Arabic script was developed in 2014. Quechua had no writing system at all until the Spanish arrived in South America and documented it using the Latin alphabet. However, the Incan Empire did use a series of knotted ropes, kipu, which were used to pass along certain messages or log information. In fact, some of the earliest written records we have from ancient Sumer appear to be records of property, like cattle, sheep, wheat, and in this case, beer. Navi doesn't have an indigenous script. Its creator, Dr. Paul Frommer, adapted the Latin alphabet for his conlang, since humans would have wanted to document what they found. So you don't need a script. You could have your conlang be spoken only, borrow an existing script, or share messages with something totally different, like ropes. But if you want one, here's a way to get started. The first thing to consider when creating a new script are its instruments. The way a script looks can vary greatly depending on if it's carved into stone, written on paper, or typed. Stone needs to be chiseled and will create hard edges like those we find on ancient Mesopotamian tablets or Greek temples. Once paper was widely available though, a script could be brushed or penned onto it, and suddenly lines could curve in ways not easily done before. All that changed again with the advent of the printing press, which, aside from making writing more efficient, changed some languages permanently. For example, it killed one of the old English letters, Thorn. Also, it's worth taking a moment to decide the direction your script is written in. Left to right is used in English, right to left in Arabic, and top to bottom is common, but not always the case, in Japanese. There are exceptions to all of this. Pretty much every direction has been used by at least one language, and some languages use multiple directions. The direction you write in might be affected by the instruments you have as well. So if your conlang is meant to be written on stone pillars, a bottom-to-top approach might make more sense, so that readers can start at head level and look up to read more. If they all write on paper, some horizontal direction might make sense. And of course, if the medium changes over time, the direction could as well. To figure out what type of script you're using, we first need to talk about the difference between consonants and vowels. Growing up, you might have been taught that vowels, for example, are letters that just say their name. But linguistically, that's not quite right. They aren't types of letters, they're specific types of sounds. Vowels are sounds where the airflow isn't cut off, like ah, e, and oo. Consonants, however, stop the airflow. B, t, g. Syllables are usually made by combining these two types of sounds, leading with the consonant, ba, ti, and gu. How scripts use and show this relationship between vowels and consonants is a big factor, so let's look at the five basic types of scripts we've seen throughout history. The symbols in abjads only represent consonant sounds, or have a majority consonants. Vowels can be represented through diacritics, though, such as in some cases with the Arabic script, or they can be simply implied, like in ancient Hebrew. Abugidas, or alpha syllabaries as they're also called, use symbols for consonants that each have an inherent vowel sound, but the vowel can be changed by modifying the symbol. They're fairly diverse and include examples like Bengali, Lao, Odia, and Thai. Alphabets are usually small sets of letters that represent consonants and vowels. Sometimes, though, multiple characters are needed to create a single sound, such as ch or th in English. Examples include the Latin and Hangul alphabets. Logographies contain symbols which represent both sound and meaning. They have massive libraries of symbols since each has a distinct translation. Examples include the Chinese Zhongwen and Egyptian hieroglyphs. And finally, syllabaries are phonetic writing systems that use symbols to represent whole syllables, which themselves are often a consonant and a vowel or just a single vowel. For example, these symbols both translate to the syllable na in salagi and hiragana. There isn't a right answer for which system to pick, and you don't have to base your script off any one of these. But there are some factors to be aware of. 
First, look at the relative size of each system. Alphabets and abjads are pretty small at just a few dozen characters. Compare that to a logographic system that has literally thousands. If you have a lot of vowels like English does, you probably want a system that shows them. An alphabet or abugida would probably work well for that. However, if you're on the opposite end of the spectrum and only have two or three vowels in your language or none, an abjad would be a better choice. As for figuring out what your script looks like, that's more of an art than a science. However, you can look at our history to get an idea of how writing systems have changed. Generally, the scripts simplify as the instruments to write improve. And if your conlang is a new language, it might be more complex or pictographic. If it's more modern, it could be more minimal. Or you could just scribble some shapes until you find something you like. Honestly, that's fine too. Just make sure the characters all share some form of internal consistency. Even if we don't know these five languages, it's really easy to tell her from separate scripts because of the variation in line thickness, curvature, and complexity. There are plenty of routes to take when creating a script. You can take inspiration from the different types we talked about, think about how it's evolved in your world, and get creative designing its symbols. There's absolutely more to learn about conlangs though, so check out the links below if you'd like to go even further. And if you're already well-versed in languages and scripts, tell us your tips in the comments. Thanks for watching.